right, in this video, we're going to be looking at the image tag and how to load images onto a web page. And just like the anchor tag, they have several attributes and values associated with them. And they also have relative and absolute paths. So I'm going to delete here the um, anchor tags. And just before I do so, I want to mention we've introduced on this tag, this first link here has two attributes. So there's the target attribute and the href attribute. The anchor tag can actually have several. It has one called title and several other attributes. So this is definitely not an exhaustive list of all the attributes of the tags. In order to get the complete list, you would need to reference uh, the W3C online or something similar, um, W3 schools, or another web page that has all of the attributes that are available to tags. But this is just a sample of a couple. All right, let's delete this and let's look at an image tag. Having said that, we'll look at a few of the image tag, but again, we're not gonna look at all of the attributes. So the image tag is IMG for image, and it's a self-closing tag. There is no close IMG tag like this. It's just a tag that self-closes just the same way as our meta tag does up here, so that meta tag. So it just has a slash and then the closing angle bracket. And the first attribute of the image tag we'll look at is source. So image src equals source. The href in the anchor tag stands for hyperlink reference and src stands for source. And again, this wants inside of here for the value, a relative path or an absolute path. So first I'll show you how to do an absolute path. I've just browsed uh, flickr.com and found some images that are in the Creative Commons, so the attribution. And uh, this is a particular image that's in there. And I'll uh, show you who did this one here in a second. I'll come back and um, pull this up. So this is by user Sergey, and there's the link to his profile right here. You can see there's the web address to him. He's just got this little flower here. And I'll use this as a quick example. So um, I've right-clicked this and said, open image in new tab, which gives me the actual address to the file. If you if you don't see this .jpg or .png inside of your URL, then you don't have the actual address to the file. So this is the absolute path to this JPEG. So I'll copy that and I'll come back here to my web page, and I'm just gonna paste that link in. And you can see it pastes the entire link there. And I'll save this index.html file and I'm gonna close these down now and go open this inside of my browser and you can see now I've loaded that image inside of my web page and this is what's called hyperlinking because um, I'm not linking to this file from my own web server I'm linking to it directly on flickr.com so I'm actually sorry not hyperlinking it's called hot linking I'm hot linking this image from Flickr so the image is being loaded directly from their servers onto my page. Now you need to check with the terms and service of whatever website you're trying to hotlink images from because they may disallow it. So make sure that you check that. I just use this as a quick example of how to create a hotlink. Now this is a relative path, or sorry, this is an absolute path, and I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing with a relative path. So um, in order to set this up, we need to set our document structure up a little bit differently. So I'm gonna go back here to my um, desktop here. I'll close this down and I'm going to place index inside of my site and I'm going to open up my site and instead of calling this folder another I'm going to rename this folder so I'll just write on a Mac you can just hit enter on a PC you right click and say rename and I'm going to call this images and I'll pull out page two and I'm going to drop this image I've downloaded a copy of this image directly on my hard drive here and I'm just going to rename this image flower.jpg for now and drop it inside of the folder. So now I have images and then I have flower.jpg. So a little bit different structure. Inside of my site, I have my index page and my page two, and then I have an images folder with that image. So because I've renamed these files and folders, all of my links will break. So if you still have all of your links from page two to page one, like we were working on in the previous video, those of course are no longer going to work because we changed the names of the folders and the, the structure of the directory. So I'm gonna go back into my index file here and let's open that up. Whoops, I opened that with Dreamweaver. I did not want to open that with Dreamweaver. 
let's quit this Dreamweaver. Let's actually right click and say open with um, our text mate, which is the program I'm using. Okay, so now we're gonna build a relative path inside of here. So again, you always start with the file you're currently working on and ask yourself, where in relation to the file I'm working on is the file I'm trying to get to. So if we look at our directory structure, I'm working on index.html and I'm trying to get to a file inside of the images folder. So I need to go forward into images. So the first step is to type images slash. Now that takes me into images. And then I can simply reference the file. So flower.jpg. And let's save that. And let's go back here and open this page now up in our web browser. And you can see that that file loads up just like it did before. This time it's using a relative path. If I was to view the page source code, this is a relative path, not an absolute path. So that's the difference between the two. That's how you can load an image with a relative path. Now the image tag has two required attributes. The first we've already used here, which is source. The second one is called alt, A-L-T. The alt tag is just a simple description of what the image is about. So I might just say a red flower. Something that simple would work. And the alt tag is used for accessibility. If somebody was using this page on a screen reader or, or something similar to that where a blind user was not able to see the picture of the flower, the screen reader would read them the words red flower so they knew what this image was about. Also, if the image for some reason was not able to load from the server, if the server had a hiccup and couldn't deliver the image to the website, the web browser would display the text red flower instead so the user would know, oh, there's supposed to be a picture of a red flower. The third reason why these are very important is for search engines. Search engines can't tell that this image happens to be an image of a red flower. So we give it an alt tag so the search engines can crawl my page and say, oh, this is an image of a red flower. So if somebody goes to Bing or Google Images and does an image search and types in the word red flower, then they um, would likely display this image in their results because of this um, alt tag. So lots of important reasons and it is a required attribute of the image tag. So both the source and the alt have to be present in all image tags. The alt tag, you can see if I refresh, it's not shown anywhere by default. It's only used by those screen readers or if the image can't load. A couple of other properties of the image tag while we're here. Um, one is width. So I can say width equals, and then I can put the number of pixels. So I can say like 200 pixels. And if I save that and come back and refresh, that constrains the width of this image to 200 pixels. Now, you may say, oh, great, well, that works great. I can resize my images however I want, but that's very, very bad practice. You never want to resize your images down using the width attribute. The reason being is that you're downloading a much larger file and only displaying it at a small size. So you're wasting bandwidth and making your website load slower for no reason. So you always want to make this image appear at the width that it is. So if my image is, image is going to be this big on my web page, you would need to resize the image to this size in Photoshop before you actually put it on the page. And just like width, there's one called height. So I can say height equals 100, and you'll see what happens here. I'm actually squashing and stretching the image out because I'm making it 100 by 200. So you would definitely want to make these values the same height and width of the actual image size. On this particular Safari browser, if I right click it and say open a new tab, it'll tell me the actual size. This is 333 by 500 pixels. So I know that the image size from, from doing that. You can also look at the properties um, of the image inside of Photoshop, or you can right click it and say inspect properties or many ways to, to find out the image size. Now, the reason why this image size is useful is that it'll help your web page layout. So when a user visits your web page for the first time, if you have a whole bunch of images all over your page, they haven't downloaded from the server yet. But if you put width and height values in there, the web browser will block out a big space where that image is supposed to go. And then as it's downloaded, it'll simply fill in that space. Whereas if you didn't put width and height, um, as the image starts to download, all the elements on your page might shift down or to the right and to the left because that image finally loaded and had to shift all the content around it. 
So your web page will kind of jump and shift a little bit. Whereas if you put the width and height attributes um, inside of your images, then your web page won't shift and jump as those images are downloading. So those are a few of the reasons to use width and heights um, inside of the image tag. And that's how you use the absolute and relative paths for loading images.